The return of Boeing Starliner spacecraft to Earth without a crew might be the most meaningless victory in the history of space exploration. Although the Starliner smoothly detached from the space station and landed gently in New Mexico on Friday night, a happy ending to the three-month test flight, it's kind of disappointing as the two-person crew is still stuck in orbit until next year. So, how does the conclusion of this flight impact Boeing and NASA? Is Boeing's frustration causing NASA to worry about its long-term partner leaving? Especially while the agency is also tackling tough issues with the Orion and SLS. All is going to get revealed in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And thanks for watching. While we're at it, we want to let you know we really appreciate you supporting the channel throughout this time. We're very close to 100,000 subscribers. So if you're watching and you haven't yet already, please hit that subscribe button now. Thank you so much. All right, back into it. So September 6th, Starliner had a relatively peaceful journey back to Earth. The Starliner spacecraft started its return journey by departing from its docking port at the space station at 6.04 p.m. Eastern, a day after the astronauts closed the hatch in preparation for the spacecraft's departure. The capsule fired its thrusters to quickly pull away from the complex, preparing for an orbit burn to guide Starliner on a trajectory towards its landing site. Later, Starliner jettisoned its disposable surface module to burn up over the Pacific Ocean, while the crew module, with an empty cockpit, headed for New Mexico. After gliding through the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean in Mexico, Starliner deployed three main parachutes to slow its descent, followed by six airbags inflating around the spacecraft's bottom to cushion the landing impact. This marked the third time a Starliner capsule has flown in space and the second one that the spacecraft failed to achieve all of its objectives. So the question we're asking is whether there are still issues with this Starliner spacecraft. Despite its success, the return was not flawless. NASA stated that one of the thrusters on the spacecraft's crew module malfunctioned during testing after the spacecraft detached from the space station. However, thanks to the system's redundancy, the faulty thruster did not pose any problems. Besides this anomaly, two of the service module thrusters got hotter than normal. NASA had intentionally inhibited the fail-off or deselect software that gathered more data, so none failed like before, so there are indeed some lingering issues with Starliner. Now NASA and Boeing will begin evaluating what happened with the spacecraft and able to determine if Boeing needs to change the design of the propulsion system, control it differently to avoid overloading the thrusters, or conduct another test flight. Notably, NASA mentioned it could still certify Starliner for a regular crew rotation mission, despite not bringing Wilmore and Williams back. While NASA officials seemed pretty positive even celebrating Starliner's safe return, Boeing appeared rather indifferent to the outcome. Three NASA managers, including Stitch, answered reporters' questions during a presser on Saturday morning after the Starliner landed. The two Boeing officials that were supposed to join the briefing canceled at the last minute. Boeing did not explain their absence, and the company has not provided any official to answer questions since NASA decided to end Starliner's test flight without the crew on board. It seems Boeing is really struggling to accept this decision by NASA. Boeing's been more than eager to have astronauts aboard the Starliner, and they're very confident in Starliner's ability to safely return astronauts to Earth. This latest mission was supposed to be the final test before NASA could certify Starliner for regular flights. However, everything feels kind of plastic and hollow at this point. Meanwhile, Kelly Ortberg, Boeing's new CEO, is deciding whether to maintain the company's space business. If it were up to Richard Abufalia, an aviation industry analyst at Aerodynamic Advisory, Mr. Ortberg would get rid of it as soon as possible. I would argue for selling their space business if they can, he said. Space travel is not a core Boeing business, and it's been plagued by problems far beyond Starliner. One of the factors blamed is the communications breakdown between company heads and the people that are actually doing the work. The top execs don't understand what's going on, and they're not interested in finding out. The idea of taking over an engineering company and letting non-engineers run it with a complete lack of understanding of the major technical challenges is what's causing the trouble. Boeing would take another reputational hit if it pulled out of the space business. But I don't see a reason to continue if they can't find a buyer. Right now, they're $45 billion in debt. They badly need to invest in their core business. Beyond space, Boeing right now is facing multiple very widely public crises. From the ongoing issues of their 737s linked to two fatal crashes that killed a total of 346 people, to a door latch popping off mid-flight and losing a billion dollars to refit Air Force One, there have been many scandals that the public right now is at risk of becoming numb to them. After all this, it's still unclear whether Boeing, with its current indifference, will withdraw from the Starliner project.
On one hand, NASA officials here are confident that Boeing will continue the commercial crew program. However, it's strange that Boeing officials haven't said the same. A public statement from Boeing on the evening of September 7th was not exactly a clear commitment. I want to recognize the work of the Starliner teams and what they did to ensure a safe undocking deorbit reentry and landing, said Mark Nappy, VP and program manager of Boeing's commercial crew program. We'll review the data and determine the next steps for the program. To be honest, Boeing and NASA have collaborated for decades, and only recently has their relationship soured. Clearly, NASA is not the one breaking up with Boeing, as Starliner is still seen as an important backup to SpaceX. NASA is eager to avoid a repeat of what happened during the 2011 to 2020 period when their space shuttle program got halted, meaning the U.S. had to rely on Russian spacecraft to get to the ISS. This means, at the very least, NASA is still very much interested in Boeing continuing the projects they're involved in. NASA doesn't want to handle all the missions alone, as the agency is already dealing with major delays and cost overruns. The most prominent topic right now is the Orion. While addressing the issues with Starliner is pretty noteworthy, what NASA is presenting with the spacecraft designed to carry humans around the moon is even more urgent. With far greater consequences, Orion will carry four astronauts and hundreds of millions, if not billions, of people are going to be watching humanity's first deep space mission in over 50 years. The issue concerns the safety of the heat shield, located at the bottom of the capsule, which protects Orion's crew during return to Earth. Even during the Artemis 1 mission, which took Orion around the moon at the end of 2022 without astronauts, charred blocks of material cracked and peeled off Orion's heat shield during re-entry. After the spacecraft landed, engineers found over 100 areas where the re-entry pressures had damaged the heat shield. After evaluating the problem for more than a year, NASA convened an independent review team to conduct an analysis of NASA's work. First, the review is expected to be done by June, but discussions continued throughout the summer and have only recently wrapped up. The findings of the team have not yet been released, but essentially NASA faces two options with a heat shield. It can launch Artemis II with the same heat shield that Orion used on Artemis I, or it can redesign and build a new heat shield, which could delay Artemis II by several years from its scheduled launch in September of next year. So far, NASA has not yet made a final call, but the situation is reminiscent of the indecision surrounding Starliner. The agency's responses have been very vague, saying things like, a decision's still being made and everything is on track, but they are confident that the target launch date of September next year will be unaffected. Each of these choices is difficult. If NASA flies with a current heat shield, there could be opposition. As seen with the Starliner deliberations, NASA's safety community has been encouraged to voice concerns. Similarly, some of the NASA safety community might express concerns about flying the current heat shield after unexpected damage on Artemis 1. At the same time, redesigning and rebuilding a heat shield would add years to the Artemis timeline, as well as flying Artemis 2 without a crew. Both decisions will be politically and financially challenging for NASA, especially at a time when Congress is more likely to cut their budget rather than up it. Whatever NASA decides, don't expect a decision soon. No one wants to touch this political quagmire before the presidential election, and it could drag on into next year. On top of this, we can't ignore the SLS rocket that carries Orion and its massive launch tower. All are still in delays due to technical issues and rising costs, as we've broken down for you in other videos. Overall, NASA's problems keep piling up, and the agency certainly doesn't want Boeing walking away from any of their projects. Remember, Boeing's going to bear the financial burden of Starliner delays and losses. And if Boeing pulls out a Starliner now, NASA is going to have to take on the full consequences. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.